Let's turn our Bibles to First Samuel chapter twenty-eight, and this morning I will be begin to. I will. I'm teaching on receiving solution, inside direction, and clarity through prayer. Receiving solution, inside direction, clarity through prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to First Samuel chapter twenty-eight, and maybe we can start from verse. Maybe let's start from verse four. The Bible says, and when the Philistines gathered together, they came and pitched in Shunem, and Samuel gathered all the people, and they pitched in Gibor. The Bible says, and Saul, sorry, and Saul gathered all the people. The Bible says, and Saul saw the host of the Philistine, and he was afraid, and his heart was greatly troubled. And he says this, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, and, and let me pause before I read the next verse, because you need to understand why Saul was heart was greatly troubled. If you're going to go through life and you're going to do significant things, you're going to come against obstacles that are going to challenge you. There's no way you can do it. You know, people keep saying that, you know, I thought it would be easy. The truth is that the path of success is never easy. Faith does not make it easy. Faith makes it achievable. I don't know if you got it. Faith doesn't make it easy. Faith doesn't say, with faith it's easier. No, no, no. Faith says all things are possible to him that believe it. That means even though it's not easy, it will still be possible. So Saul had gone up, and when he got when he got the Bible says Saul this host of Philistine. Some people, what they're really facing right now is the fact that they are really believing to raise this huge amount of money for the expansion of their business. And it's big to you, it is small, but that 50 million they need for the next phase of their business is huge. Some people they have a project right in front of them. Right in front of them. They have a project right there. So the Bible says that Saul faced the, faced the host of the Philistine. And when Saul faced the host of the Philistine, I, I want to take note of this. This is very powerful. When Saul saw the host of the Philistine, when he saw the obstacle, he was afraid and his heart greatly troubled. Then what did he do? Which is what he would do because the Bible says, and Saul inquired of the Lord, and inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him not, neither neither by dreams nor by urine or by the prophet and one of the things i want to explain is this why did Saul inquire of the lord because Saul knew when i get to a place of fear when i get to a place of fear what i need to overcome by fear is faith Saul knew that if faith walks in fear will walk out so what is what, what, what did he know he says if i can hear a word from god that will bring about faith into my heart fear will walk out automatically but the key thing is this, and, and this is the key thing. Everybody's going to find themselves in that place. Everybody's going to find themselves in that place. Where, where you feel afraid, you feel afraid, you don't know what to do. But that's why direction, that's why insight, that's why guidance is very important. And that was what Saul was looking for. Why was Saul looking for a word from the Lord? Because the word from God will give him some kind of assurance. There are people here right now. You want to step out and do your business. And you don't know if that's the right thing to do. And you don't know. But what you need right now is a word from the Lord. Because Saul knew if I have a word of the Lord, it will give me this kind of assurance. There are some of you, you're in between marital decisions. And you don't know if it's this person or that person. How do you make the right decision? It's just that assurance. Because... Saul had the army, but he was afraid. So, that's why it's important for us to be able to have direction and clarity. What does not having direction and clarity look like? Let's turn our Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. This is what it looks like. The Bible says this, If the iron be blunt, and it does not wedge or sharpen the edge then it must put more strength for wisdom is profitable to direct what does that mean if i'm walking 
and I keep working and I keep working at something and I do not learn how to be effective at it he says that I will not see commensurate result I, I want to give a just maybe a more practical example when people keep doing the same thing and don't see result, they become frustrated. And they say things like, you know, I've been trying to get a job for five years. I don't know why I can't get a job. I've been trying to get promoted for three years. I can't get promoted. I've been trying to get married for five years. I can't get married. This is the reason why you need the insight. This is the reason why you need direction. This is the reason why. You know why? And this is the reason why Saul was looking for something. Because he knew that, hey, if I don't have direction, I'm going to end up frustrated. If I don't have clarity, I will end up confused. So see what the Bible says in verse 10 here. He says, if the iron be blunt and you do not wedge the edge or sharpen the edge, he says, you will put more strength. So what will happen is this. You will find yourself putting more strength to raise the fund for the business. You will find yourself putting more strength to raise the fund for the business. And you will find yourself putting more strength but you will end up in frustration because you do not know how to do it. It's not as if your efforts are not being honored, but the Bible says you lack direction. See what it says. He says wisdom is profitable for direction. So, once you have effort and there is no direction, you end up in frustration. I don't notice that. Once you have effort and there is no direction, you end up in frustration. And that's why some people, when you speak to them and say, what's going on with this business? You know, they're struggling, they're struggling, they're struggling. And, and they're really struggling because there's no direction. You ask them and say, you know what? I know you've been trying to get a child. You've been trying to have a child. And when you say that about it, you will see the anger on their face. Their anger is like, am I going to kill myself? And you understand what they're saying. But why they feel frustrated that I've done everything I should do. But why am I not having commercial results? And you talk to a single person, it could be a man or a woman, and says, I've done everything I should do. Why am I not seeing results? And see what the Bible says here. Because the Bible does not, the Bible acknowledges that you are using effort. See what it says. I wanted to notice this. Verse 10. And if the iron be blunt and it do wet not wedge it, rougher. He's applying more strength. So the frustration is, I'm applying more strength. That's the frustration. That why is my activity not commensurate to result? And he put it there. He said, instead of applying more strength, he said, wisdom is profitable to direct. That means that if you can get direction, your result will skyrocket and amplify. And that's why this teaching on insight is important because I know a lot of our people are putting effort there. This teaching on direction is important because we've been asking the question, I've been praying for two years now, why has it not happened? Because the, the, the thing is that, so when you're praying, it's not enough, you add fasting. When you're fasting enough, you add 21 days. Then you move to 40 days. You move to 100 days. You do one year fasting. It has not changed. Then you resort into frustration. And God is saying that, instead of you to do that, before you add more strength, get wisdom. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Have you not seen people? This is people. People that start a business. They raise money to do this business. They raise 10 million. After one year, and nothing shows. They raise under 10 million. Nothing shows. Raise it. And they keep raising money. And God is saying, instead of you putting energy raising money, why not get wisdom for direction? Look at verse 15. I want to go here. So one of the reasons why it's important to get insight direction and clarity is this number one once you have insight it reduces your frustration let me tell you something there when people don't pray you know some say well, why are you not praying most of the time i don't blame them the reason is this you cannot have enjoyed the beauty of answer prayers and encounters and not know how to pray the reason you don't know how to pray is that there's nothing to show for it you oh my god can, can we be honest a lot of Christians pray because that's what they say in church. They don't have any personality that, hey, prayer works. But there are some of us that cannot say that. If we say that, an angel can slap us. Because we've seen it over and over and over again that the power of prayer works. 
you know the side, someone that I've not seen you before sees you and said, I saw you in a dream. In the dream, the side you do. In a dream, yet you have never seen me before. When our church was small, maybe small feet like, were a hundred. We're praying that the spirit of God will bring people. This woman, she's from Ibadan, grandmother, about 70. She was the oldest that came. But the day she came to the church, she called me. He said, Pastor, I'm a Christian minister from Ibadan. My children have, my children have, my children just had their, uh, their child, my own grandchild. I came to serve. He said, when I came to serve, I prayed that God would show me a church to go to. He said, when I came here, I didn't come here first. I went to my children's church. It was a redeemed church down the road. I told my children, this is not the church that God showed me. He said, because when I prayed, I had a dream. He said, when I came to your church, this is the church showed me. I said, how do you know? He said, I saw you, but I couldn't see your face. He said, but I saw that the church had a projector in the center, by the side, and was flashing there. That's what I remembered. He said, as I came to this church, that's exactly what I saw. You can't have this kind of result and say, God does not answer prayers. You can't. This very symbolic. Glory to God. So, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15, I want to see it. And I'm saying so because a lot of people see a lot of um, um, bitterness against Christianity, God, pastors on social media. You'll be surprised that most of the people that said such things were formerly very strong Christians. Some of them were ministers. And the frustration came because there was a picture of hope that was painted. And they did everything they knew how to do. And that picture of hope did not come. And since they cannot see God, they take it out on the churches and the pastors. I'm telling you, that's why you see the anger. They are looking for how to name because they, they are bitter that I, it was as if they scammed me. Oh, yeah, I spent my 10 in church. They told me this and this, and they look at me right now. They told me that if you marry as a virgin, God will say to you, Look at me right now. I'm 58. Well, where would the serpent come from? So they say, When you say that, visit, say, don't be, do anything you want. Don't, don't let any pastor tell you nonsense. And, and it comes from a priest. So, where does the first show come from? You will hear the father, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Does that go to pray? Does this person pray? Do they pray in Europe? And what they are saying is this. This is what they are saying. I understand what they are saying. What they are saying is that, come on, don't say prayer works. That things work for people that do not pray. And let me tell you, in a sense, they are right. But in another sense, it's not complete. But when they speak, what I needed to see is a frustration. Why is the frustration coming from? Verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. See what the Bible says. And this is why it's important for you to have insight. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. It says, The labor of the foolish weary yet. It says, Their effort gets them frustrated, exhausted, depressed, unmotivated. Why? Because they know not how to go into the city. He said, The reason why their labor in spiritual things get them depressed is because they do not understand how to go into the city. And let me say something to you. When you go to a hospital, you understand this. When you say, you complain to the doctor, brrr, what's the next thing after complaining? Tell me now. It's always one word. Once you finish complaining, what's the next thing? Tests. The doctors know we cannot treat until we know what is wrong. When you see things going wrong, until you know what is wrong, we don't know how to pray. Until we know how to run, we don't know how to fix it. But Christians don't know that one. Once something is wrong, prayer is all purpose drug. Oh yeah, fire. No, calm down. Get inside first. Get direction first. The doctors will tell you, in fact, there are some people that say, treat me. They say, I can't treat you. You have to come back because we have to get the test result. They will say, take this pain medication to reduce the pain. It's not your drug or when you come back, we'll treat you. This is the power of insight. What is inside? We need to know what is going wrong to know how to deal with it. And this is why, this is why a lot of Christians fail. People will just conclude it's a demonic something. How did you know? So they say, Pastor, I, I, he say, I have a spiritual husband. How do you know? Pastor, I can explain. I'm 27, I'm not married. I said that. Ah, how does that mean you're a spiritual husband?
You see, so the person will be going for deliverance. They will deliver, deliver, deliver. But when they start to deliver, you know that the worst person to deliver is someone that does not have demon. Because nothing will come out. You don't know that, have you? I've seen it before. Have you not gone there before? And there's nothing inside you. You just see the prophet sweating. And you, you'll be laughing that. Okay, okay. Come on, come on. Do you feel anything? I don't feel anything. You, say, you, you will feel something today. Come on. Is it turning? It's not turning me. It's not turning you. you feel something. And the reason why is that there's nothing inside. Say what the Bible says. I want to read it again. Verse 15. It says here, the labor of the foolish man wearies every one of them. So, all those activities become punishment. Not because it's not working, because he does not know how to go into the city. So, if you're going to be one very effective, so maybe, maybe you, you're, you're trying to apply the power of God to your business. Maybe something is going on in your marriage and you're looking for how to solve it. Maybe something is going on with your health and you need a miracle. Before you exercise all of those things, one of the things you must get as a foundation right is a place of direction, is a place of insight, is a place of what? Clarity. And once you get clarity right, there's a way you have confidence. You know, you know when the doctor gets the result, he'll just come and say, Madam, we know what's wrong now. Now we're now to treat you. This is your treatment plan. How can he say with confidence? Because now he knows what is wrong. It's not guesswork again. And once you have clarity, it increases your speed. The reason why people can't go fast is that we copy one another. You can't go faster than we are copying, yes or no? When you enter exam, if you are copying someone, you can't submit for him. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. If you enter exam and you are copying someone, it is an abomination. How can you submit before him? What? What? You can't try it. When he has finished writing, then you will not start. So you find out the reason why people are behind this is there's no clarity, there's no direction. So, so, so you see, they say, All my friends are doing pure water, I do pure water. I was saying in the first service, I said, Now, the season in this country, Canada or London, some people by destiny should move to Canada, some people should not even move to the should not even near the airport. The reason why read the Bible, there are people like Joseph. They must get to a foreigner to be exalted. That's the truth. Joseph in the Old Testament. It was when he got to Egypt, he became prime minister. He must get there. The Joseph in the New Testament. The Bible says God tell him, take Mary and the, and the child and go down to what? Egypt. Powerful. But there are people like Isaac. When there's famine, you must stay. Because it's in the staying the blessing is. The question is, which one are you? Because we can be friends. Does not mean that our destiny look alike. We can be friends. It doesn't mean what our destiny looks alike. So the fact that your friend moved, Lord, you should move. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So one of the things you will notice about the ministry of Jesus Christ is that he had clarity. You know, the Bible says there was five loaves and three fishes. And five loaves and three fishes. He will say, hand over the mouth. He asked Philip. Philip said, what do we do? Just Christ said, and Jesus knew what he would do. When you see people that are very successful in whatever they do, one of the things you must know is that they have clarity and direction. What does clarity look like? The re- let me explain this way quickly. And let me say this quickly. Time invested in getting direction, investment and clarity will always make you be ahead. There are people that would, there are people that would be very fast. They, don't, they just want to run. Didn't you notice when 9 11 happened and Osama Bin Laden wiped out the World Trade Center? America just kept quiet. On the outside, we were wondering what were they doing. They did some gragra initially, but on the inside, what were they doing? They were gathering insight, intelligence, insight, intelligence, insight, intelligence. The day they will kill Obama, we did not even know he was to place Osama, rather, Osama. The day they will kill Osama, the day they will kill Osama, we don't even know what to place. We just heard on CNN, he's been killed, he's been buried. Once you have insight and intelligence, your success will seem effortless because. It seems there's a force working with him. So let all the people be running. Gri, gri, gri. Don't worry. You just stay. Be gathering. Intelligence. Insight. Be praying. Be gathering. Let them run. By the time you take off, it's like a rocket. They'll be saying, where did it come from? Because you have to fire ahead. 
Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So what does direction look like? Direction, direction is the part question. It's more like where. It's a where question. It's a where question. Lord, from here, where is it? That's the direct, it's a pathway question. What does insight look like? Insight talks about the question of meaning. Okay, I understand, but what does this mean? And clarity is a what question. The challenge with people is that they just take one and take off. They just take one and take off. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to go deeper. Look at, look at the story of Peter. Peter had a dream in the Bible. And when Peter had a dream in the Bible, and this is very powerful. <laughs> Peter had a dream in the Bible. And when Peter had a dream in the Bible, you know, God told him it was a simple dream. He says, eat. And he says, I don't eat unclean things. And God said, what God has called clean, don't call unclean. The dream happened three times. The Bible says, and the dream was pulled off from him. That was what he saw. The meaning was this. See, guess what? So that was, so God was exposing him to something. But he didn't know what it meant. Some people just hear one instruction and take off. He just said, start a business. Does it mean resign your job? Just hear one instruction. Just take off. So, the next thing was, you know, was this. But there was relevant information. Clarity. Clarity was that, the relevant information was that this dream was not food. Because what he saw was animals. In the real meaning, what he saw was is a Gentile. And God saying, never call the Gentiles or clean. But the clarity, the details was now this. What was the details? People will come from Cornelius' house. Go with them. Don't ask any question. Why is this important? It's important because it's important for us to understand. I was saying in the first service about the need for people to understand the patterns of God in their life. That, that everybody has a pattern of loss and everybody has what? A pattern of what? Gain. I, I, was, I said it earlier on. I was talking with um, one of my friends and he had to go to hit $10 million and he had, he's been close there but there was still a gap. So and the month year was over. So we're just talking. And he says, I said, and I asked him, I said, good. I said, first of all, um, God, God uses pattern. That's what I can say. I'm telling you, just look at that. God uses pattern. I'm telling you. I don't know how to say it. When God met Moses, he met him with a rod. Throughout Moses' ministry, that rod was important to him. True heart, Moses, that one was important to him. What is the pattern? So I asked him. This is what I asked him. I said, the way you've lost money, write three of them for me. The way you've gained money, write three of them for me. He wrote it. Because, I, well, we had to so identify the pattern of gain. But he, was, he had lost $1.6 million. I said, some money, I'm not sure if it was one point six. He had lost some money. I said, how do you gain money? How do you lose money? So I said, okay. He said, I lose money because I partner with people and I invest. He said, is it the putting money that makes you lose money? He said, no. It's with the people I partner with. I said, is there a pattern? He said, there's no pattern. I said, okay. I wish, I'm sure there's a pattern. Write their name. I said, the first person you lost money with, why did you invest with him? He said, oh, he's my brother. I said, that's good. Emotional reason. Second person lost money, what was it? Oh, he's my pastor's sister. I said, that's good. Emotional reason. Third person, he said, is somebody else described relationship? I said, can you see? Every time you lost money, you invested based on emotions. Are you seeing your pattern? He said, my God, I never saw it in my life. If you look carefully, you can see your future from your past. I'm telling you, if you look carefully, you can see it. Just like the way you make money. You know, there are people I've spoken to are like, I want to do this. And they will tell you that I don't do this kind of business. And they will tell you the reason why is that I lose money when I do it. So I don't do it again. I make money from doing this. That was why <laughs> pastors are very powerful. When Saul told David, take my armor and go and use the fight Goliath. David says, sir, all I know is stones and sting. These stones and sticks are skid beer. Killed lion. Killed tiger. He said, this thing, I've not tested it before. It's a new pattern for me. Let me use what I know. And it was that stone and slick that brought up Goliath. The major problem is this. Are you able to identify the pattern of gain and loss in your life? If you're very sensitive, all the time you grew in your life, there was pattern. I mean, I was talking to owners yesterday. And we're talking about his personal growth and how we wanted him to grow. And I told him, I said that, I know him very well. I said, I know the pattern of growth in your life. I, and I began to discuss it with him. He said, thank you for helping. I, some, some people, 
the way you are, and this happens to phlegmatics a lot. If your temperament is phlegmatic, this happens to phlegmatics a lot. Phlegmatic, until they are put in a point of pain, they never grow. I'm telling you. Because for that, predominantly, that's, that's how I function also. Until they are put in a point of pain. It's when they go through pain, they will make their sure adjustments. But the key thing is, is, can you identify? That was the problem with Lot. Lot could not identify his pattern of prosperity. He became prosperous not because he was intelligent, because he was linked to who? Abraham. The moment Lot left Abraham, guess what? Everything he got in Sodom and Gomorrah, he lost it, including his wife. He came out poor just with children. The question is this Are you able to identify your pattern of God in your life? And he said that when you want to change, when you want to gain, these are the things that happen. When you want to lose, these are the things that happen. Glory to God. In the first service, I gave them time. I said that everybody should write down three patterns of gain and three patterns of losses and go back home and go and look at it. And that's why all of them are married. All of them are married. It happens both with man and woman and woman and man. When you want to make a decision, your wife will be warning you, honey, honey. You know why? To her, the pattern is obvious. To you, it's not obvious. Because she, <laughs> she can tell that, hey, that's it all. And sometimes it's the man that's warning the woman. He said, hmm, this place wants to start. Because to him, it's obvious. You know, just because of people are not very attentive, they are not able to pinpoint what they see. But within them, they can calculate and this is wrong. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, right? Well, the first, one of the first times I preached this in church, one guy came to meet me outside. I said, Pastor, thank you very much. I said, why are you saying thank you? Ha, he said, you just saved me tens of millions. He said, I'm about to do a transaction tomorrow and wire millions to them. I said, okay. He said, he said well, I know it's a pattern of loss. I know how they do it. This is not the first time. They will rush me. I will not be able to think. They will rush me. They will say, if you don't invest by tomorrow, you will lose everything. He said, it's when I send the money, I will not start regretting. He said, and I'm about to send it tomorrow. He said, thank God I came to church on Sunday. Because once tomorrow comes, I will send it. I know the money is gone. Are you here? And many of you know that. Some of you, all of you that are single, you know how you date heartbreakers. Same pattern. It's same pattern. See, you don't understand. It's the same pattern. You just be dating a Yoruba version of the Igbo one you dated last, that, last time. That's the truth. You just did a Yoruba version of the Igbo one you dated last time. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just the same person you are dating. So, when we meet him, you're like, ah, you don't know, Pastor, this one is very different. So, no, 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 it's very different. Just like, ah, hey, ah, this iPhone 14 or iPhone 13, it's just the same thing. Just different packaging. Glory to God. But it's a power of insight. It's a power of insight. Because once you don't have insight, you'll be frustrated. I, I said in the other service, that I, I said a lady came to me and was telling me how she, demon has affected her work. This is that. This, 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 this. I said, a demon has affected her. I said, okay. I just had the feeling that it was not a demon. He said, eh, my mom, give me 20 million. Do a business. I'll lose it. After two years, I'll lose 10 million. I'll lose this. I said, okay. What did we trade? What did I go and buy and sell? Okay, madam. How do you get your selling price? He said, ah, very simple. Whatever I buy is times it's times two. So if I buy a two naira, I sell a four naira. Oh, fantastic. We sell a four naira. I said, they come a four naira. I said, no, that's just the accepted thing that is in the right price. By the time we sat down and looked, we looked at her traveling costs, shipping costs, changing dollar, everything. We discovered that she was buying and selling. She was selling lower than the cost price. So eventually she was eating to her capital. Eating to her capital. Eating to her capital. Those see, some problems are not demonic. Just into eyes that can see. Just in the eyes that can see. She said, my God. And I've been fasting and prayer. I told her. I said, if they, he said, I've been fasting, praying. I fasted 40 days, 50 days. I thought it was the difference issue. He said, I'm going to be that pastor, me this pastor. I said, that's the problem. Because if they access this door, more strength must be put. And she felt frustrated. One lady told me, said that pastor, I don't know why I'm not getting anybody to come to me. He said, I think he's my spirit. I said, it's true. Only marine spirit. I said it's true. Marine spirit. You know what I said to her? I said, How will people see you? He said, You don't want to date anybody in your office. All of them are out. 
when you come to the, from the office, you go home. From home, you come to the office. When you come to church, after church, you are the first to leave. How will they see you? Is the angels that will carry their picture on the head and say she's single? Low. She's single. Low. She's single. Low. She's single. Low. She's single. Low. You don't know you need to be found. You need to be found in a place we can find you. Praise God. Somebody say hallelujah. So, how do I receive insight? The question now is that how do I receive insight? And the reason I'm saying so is that this why is very powerful. You know, there's a place I, I, I didn't get to in, in when I was talking about Saul. The Bible says when Saul did not hear from God, he began to contact mediums. So when people want direction and clarity and they don't hear from God, they will start seeking prophet, this, that. People tell them also. You will see questions, one again looking for psychics. Consulting people on, on, on social media to tell them their future. To tell them what their dream means. Because they don't have clarity. But once you have clarity, you know. Should I go into politics for this? Should I go into this for this? Should I? You understand. You know, when you talk about direction and all those things, it's like, it's like GPS. The GPS will tell you, turn right. That's direction. Is that not so? That's very powerful. He said he went to go. What the GPS tells you. So, the first thing the GPS tells you is direction. Turn right. The GPS now gives you insight. What does he give you insight on? He will tell you, there's an alternative route that is 40 minutes delayed. He will now tell you that on that your own route, when you get to an intercession, you will express what? 10 minutes traffic. When you get there, when you see traffic, you don't think God is delaying you. You understand it's a process. Because some people hurry out of the will of God. The reason why they don't have insight. Because look at what Joseph said. Joseph said, what you thought for evil was God prepared me for the palace. The reason why I could say so was insight. When they went to take Jesus Christ and Peter pulled the, pulled the knife, um, the sword and cut off someone's ear, he said, Peter, stop it. This must happen for that to happen. Insight. Insight that there must be a season to die for me to get up. So, when your friends are saying, hey, 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 you said, this is my own dying season. Why? I need to die. Except a corner of it dies, he abides alone for me to get up. It's insight that makes you patient in death. Praise God. I said, praise God. That's what it, it makes you patient. Ah, your friend said, ah, this, this is happening. Ah, my children are not in Harvard. This is amazing. Fara, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm telling you because they will just say this to push you after the will of God. Let me tell you something. Sincerely, there are some things I thank God did not happen to me earlier. Because I'm not sure, even though I was praying, I had the capacity to carry it. And I've seen people that blessings ruin them. I have someone I know. In January, it was worth 5 billion. In December, it was in depth of 2 billion. It ran away. When the company hit 5 billion, hey! he would just carry the staff. They would travel. Some of the top of his girlfriends, about 15 of them, just carried him to show. His wife came to me. He said, my husband has white girlfriend, Asian girlfriend. He will fly them to where he is. The money was controlling him. The last time we spoke, even if they 100,000, I said, can you please give me? This person had, at some point, maybe 100 staff. You know the thing? If you don't know the season you are in, you get to, to, to abuse it. So the question now is this. this is where we're going to close. Now, how do I get insight? How do I get direction? How do I get clarity? So, I'm someone, I'm praying for my business expansion. And I'm really, really praying, how do I get insight? I'm praying for the next phase of my life. I've just crossed a significant age milestone. How do I get insight? I've moved into this country and this is it. How do I get insight? The first thing is this. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. The Bible says that the thoughts I have towards you are the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. What does that mean? 
to get insight, you must come to a realization that there's a plan. And it's a good plan for your life. The second way to get insight is this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Is by understanding the channels through which insight will come. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 9. The Bible says this. You want to understand the channels through which insight will come. He said, as it is written, watch what it says. Eyes has not seen, ears has not heard, neither has it been prepared, sorry, neither has it entered into the heart of man. How do you get insight? I want to see this. The way you get insight is very powerful. You will see something. And it will have a deeper meaning to you. It says, eyes has not seen. It says, the way it comes. I'm telling you, you will just drive past. And say, ah. But it can be an estate here now. And that thing you have seen is the answer to your prayer. I, I shared with you last, was it last week about a brother that someone took a loan for and uh, didn't know him before. He said, as I prayed, his picture just came into my mind. It entered his heart. You will just hear a conversation. You will hear a conversation that triggers something. God, see, the, the thing about inside that many of you are saying, when I pray, oh, blah, 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 it will jump on me. Mm -mm. Sometimes it happens that way. But sometimes what happens is that you will just be in a conversation and one news will just flash. There's a business I have and last week I was able to make about 300% from the business just in three days. How did I come across the person that helped me? I had in mind to do the business. Watch this one. So, I was praying that Lord is what I do not. I felt the Spirit of God said, do it. Last year, I went to preach in Abuja Church. When I went to preach in Abuja Church, I went downstairs for lunch with the, I think with the Abuja Church pastor. As we went downstairs for lunch, we just went, went up. Around 10 p.m., the hotel called me. When they called me, they said, someone is here to see you. I said, I'm not expecting anybody. They said, oh, the person just wants to see you for two minutes. I said, please, I'm sleeping. If you want to see me, they should see me tomorrow. Eventually, the person came tomorrow. And when he came tomorrow, young guy, 33, he bought a box, a sort of a line on back, and all was money. He said, I just want to give you and give you this. I've seen you online leading prayers. My life has been blessed. I just want to thank you. Ah, so he took the money, but I was concerned. Because the way it looked, it did not look like the money was in the bag. And I said, my brother, come, what do you do? He now told me what he did. It was exactly the business I was trying to do. And I didn't know that as young as he was, he was one of the top people in that business. He said, I want to do that, sir. He said, don't worry, sir. I will guide you. Last week, he just told me, sir, for the business, do one, two, three, four. Do three, seven, five, five, six. He said, whatever you've done. I just said, we've made 300%. He said, that's how we make it all. Guess what? It was just me walking to go and have lunch. And someone saw me. Sometimes the Spirit of God will tell you, get up, take a stroll. It doesn't matter. Take his truth. Are you here? Ask Philip. He said, Philip, get up now. Go to Gaza. If Philip has said, I will go tomorrow, you will miss the top line knock. If Philip has said, I will go tomorrow, because the man was driving past Gaza. Many of you don't even know that when you sit in church is divine orchestration. You don't even know that that seat is divine orchestration. You just look, 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 look. And that's why the Bible says, how does God reveal his intents to us? He says, I have not seen. So, I'm sometimes I'm reading a book and I'm seeing in the book something deeper than what they're writing. You are in a conversation. You just say, uh, you know, this and this, 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 this. Really? I'm just taunt. Ah, really? You are shocked. I has not seen. Neither has he heard. Neither has he entered to the heart of man. So those are the channels. What are you saying? You, see, you look and you see. It's only to look, you see. You hear and you hear. That's what the Bible says. To him that hear, more will be given. More what? Insight. Are you hearing me? You've just been in a conversation and that's it. The next way I come is this. So, so we've understood the channels of insight. Let's, let's take one step further. I have about two or three things to say and we'll close, close from there. Job chapter 22. 
Listen to me, everybody. Here. Look, listen, ever look up, please. This might be one of the most. This might be one of the most important things I will say today. When you come to this church, because this church is a spirit-filled church, where the presence of the spirit is heavy, it was given to us. It's not that we ask for it. I said, when I was a child, when I didn't even know right from left, the Lord gave me supernatural ministry. One of the things you must know happens every time someone steps in to preach is that the Lord sends them to you with words. I'm telling you. But many people will be here thinking of Asna. And Lord, you watch it all like the same thing. You must know you are sent with word and you must be attentive so that when that word comes, you don't know the Lord has answered me. Just to so thank you, Jesus. I've heard that. That's it. I, that's why I came today. I've heard it. Are you, are you attentive? Because you can just come religious and say, oh, wow. It's when they clap, your mind will now show up. Okay, clap. So I'm mind to show up. Praise God. Just let us clap. Praise God. Hallelujah. So because you, I will give you, and this happens regularly. I mean, some of you will have testified. Someone brought a friend to me and said, Pastor Balaji, do I know you? I said, why are you asking me this question? He said, I brought my friend here. She has some challenges. My friend has accused me that today, the whole service you preach about her. And that's because I've told you about her problem. And I told her that she's coming. I said, lady, both you and your friend, I'm seeing for the first time. Me, I've preached as God has sent me. If it touches you, let it touch you. How many of you, someone has told you that before? You've had that experience. Just wave your hands. Wave your hands. Let me see. No, wave it. I want other people to say it. You say, see. Praise God. All right. So Job chapter 22 verse 28. Because I want your eyes to be able to see and hear. And some people is until they say there's someone here. Ah, if you wait, you wait forever. Oh. Yeah, waiting for there's someone. All this one are preaching, is it not someone? Say, someone here. He said, Yeah, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. All this one is it not for someone. Praise God. Job 22, verse 28. I want us to see something. Verse 28. So, how do we get insight? How do we get direction? How do we get insight? How do we get direction? So, I, I, this thing about marriage, I've been trying to deal with. I, I've been praying about this, my child. I've been praying about this contract. I've been praying about this funding. I've been praying specifically for a deeper encounter of the Holy Spirit. I've been praying, you know, I, I'm far from everybody I watch online. I've been praying that, how do I get this clarity? Look at this. Job 22 verse 28. See what the Bible says. Let's read together. I want to go. Thou shalt also decree a thing. And it shall what? Okay, and unto thee, sorry, sorry, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. Continue, sir. And the light shall shine upon thy way. What is he saying? Watch this now. The way we've been taught prayer is this we shall what? Decree a thing. It shall be established. So we say, ladies and gentlemen, decree. Ah, We begin to decree. But it didn't end there. He says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. What will happen in response to you decreeing? He says, and the light, that means illumination, will shine upon your ways. Oh my God. What does that mean? As you are praying and decreeing for that funding, images will just flash up in your mind. The light has shone. The woman with the issue of blood, she had never seen anybody touch his garment before to be healed. How did she know? In the place of meditation and saying to herself, because she was decreeing, that if I, may, that if I see Jesus, I will be touched. The image say, if you touch him, they will kill you. Touch the hem of his garment. He said, that's what I will follow. This is why we... The problem is this. This only comes to people that pray. It also comes to everybody. And this is why a lot of people's prayers don't work. Why does it not work? Because where they stop is decree. It's like people... Doctor gives you a drug. You say, use two in the morning, use two in the evening. When you have pain. Have you noticed when you don't use the evening on, pain will come in the morning. The reason why is that the doctors are trained to understand... How much the tablet can handle pain for how many cycles? Yes or no? So, they put it ahead of the next cycle. When you use it half, just like antibiotics, the thing will return stronger. The same thing here. We're going to prayer, but we go halfway. It says, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. And it tells you, and the light will shine upon your ways. What does that mean? You will have illumination. That's why all of you that are not fasting and praying, I don't know what to tell you. Because this is why we pray. One of the things we do in fasting is that we use fasting to silence the flesh. Because there are many voices. The flesh is also talking. We silence it so that that voice can become louder. 
Are, are you hearing me, somebody? Oh, that's weak. Someone say amen. amen. Oh, that's weak. Someone say amen. amen. Somebody say louder, amen. amen. What does that mean? As if you decree a thing. Let's go back to that brother's testimony. I, I shared with you last, I mean, last week. Your last week. The brother, and I saw him in the first service. And he was talking about, you know, how he got a contract. He was in the men's fellowship. And he's in the men's fellowship. He said, when he got a contract, he didn't have the money to carry out the contract. It was large. He didn't have the money. He said, as he began to think and meditate and pray about how God will help him. He said, at home, the picture of another brother in church just flashed in my mind. He said, the problem was this. I don't talk to this person. So I didn't even know what to tell him. He said, I went to meet the brother. And when I went to meet the brother, he took the courage. He said, the worst he can say is get out. He said, after seven, I went to meet him. I said, sir, can I see you? The brother said, yeah, you can see me. And he said, these are the documents. I have a contract. These hundreds of millions are needed. I, I don't know if you can loan me. The point is this. Let me tell the difference. Most of you will not hear as he prayed, he sought the brother. What you will hear is that I went to meet the brother. You will not say, that's good. There are kind people in this church. Let me go and meet them. You must know that there are people that God has put your help in their heart. Not everybody. When it was time for Elijah to be fed, he said, go to the widow of Zarephath. There were other widows close to him, but they didn't have instruction. Only the widow of Zarephath had received instruction. You need to just know you must go to your widow of Zarephath. Because other widows will shun you in a painful way. Praise God. So as he went to meet the brother, the brother just said, okay, um, give me a number. I said, call this number, they will help. And when he called the number, when he called the number and it was time to help, very, very, very powerful story. When it was called, it was time to help. They said, we need collateral, this and this. And they called the other guy that was meant to help. He said, they want collateral. The guy said, see me. He gave him document of his house. He said, sir, you've not, you don't even know my son's name. You're giving me document of your house. He said, I feel led to help you. Give him document this. Eventually, he got the loan and all of those things. He said, I, I could have run away with your document and everything. No. He said, just the weight is in my heart. I know you don't run away. By the time he did the deal, he made money. He came back. And when he came back, this is very powerful. He came to give the brother the document of his house. And he brought some money also to say, you help me, sir. Take, sir. And the brother said, I can't take a dime from you. It was put here to help you. That's it. The question is that, who does that for any other person? Only the person that light has shone on. How did he see the brother? He said, you shall decree a thing and shall establish and the light will shine on you. Are you hearing me, somebody? The light needs to shine. That sales you want to hit, the light needs to shine. That marriage, the light needs to shine. That promotion, the light needs to shine. So we stay in prayer until the light shines. How does the light shine? It's going to be, it says, it says eyes have not seen, ears heard, the heart. It will just be a picture. It will be a light bulb moment. Do this. And the light has shone. And someone says, okay, pastor, thank you very much for that. So, there are so many things. He says, so, why do we keep praying, 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 praying? Isaiah chapter 28, and this is why I stopped in the first service. I wish I had so much time. Isaiah 28, verse 13. Someone say hallelujah. Isaiah 28, verse 13. Let's read together. I want to go. But the word of God was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they may go, that they may go, and fall backwards and be broken, stead and be taken. Good. Watch this now. This is why we pray and we keep praying. Because when the revelation of God's word comes, see what it says. It said the word of God comes, what? Here a little, there a little. Sometimes when the light comes, it doesn't come in totality. We have to stay in the place of prayer to hear more. So, many of you are going on instruction or half instruction. Are you hearing me? It's half instruction. I heard this. I had started a business. I, I know you had started a business. Did he tell you when? With whom? Instead of you to stay there for the next 21 days and fasting and praying, you just run with that. And once you crash, you now say God is not faithful. But did you hear it completely? Light is powerful, though. I'm telling you, you want to choose that. Look at Jesus Christ. 
before Jesus Christ chose the apostles, read what happened. The Bible says the night before, he spent the whole night praying. Ah, this is amazing. He spent the whole night praying. As he came in the day, he just said, you, 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 you. Why couldn't they resist? He had received light in the private sir. Bible says, as the, as the apostles and prophets, pastors and prayed, Acts chapter 10, the Holy Ghost said, light came. Because light comes in response to that prayer and fasting. And that's why we're fasting and praying this season. Because light needs to shine. And once there's direction and insight and clarity, we're sure of victory. And the reason why we persist is this. Because here a little. I want to ask you before, again, have you turned on an allergy line before? What happens? When it comes on, it's not as bright as it should be. It grows what? Stronger. And what? Stronger. And what? Stronger. That's why we stay in prayer. Because we stay in prayer until the light comes out to the fullest. We don't just come to the summit and run away. No. It has to come stronger and stronger and stronger. Shall we pray?